want you to hit me as hard as you can. Go, go. This fall, one man is going to beat the odds and survive on the desolate terrain of the planet Mars, and his name is... Matt Damon. Yes, this weekend does indeed mark the release of Ridley Scott's highly anticipated adaptation of Andy Weir's beloved bestseller, The Martian. And early reviews from Toronto are leading us to believe that Ridley Scott has broken his long streak of turds and given us another great sci-fi flick. So seeing as we're about to see a movie co-starring Jeff Daniels that has the word Martian in the title, let's suffer through another movie co-starring Jeff Daniels with the word Martian in the title. My favorite Martian. Disney's 1999 film adaptation of the 1960s sitcom starring Ray Walston and Bill Bixby. Now you may ask, how the hell did Disney expect children to give a shit about a movie based on a TV show that wasn't even rerunning on TV land at the time? Well, shit, I don't know, um, put Doc Brown in it? Or Austin Powers' girlfriend? Or Daryl Hannah? All of the kids love Daryl Hannah. Yeah, needless to say, this movie didn't do so good. But let's see if it deserves a reevaluation. I mean, it is written by the voices of the brave little toaster and slappy squirrel from Animaniacs. And no, I'm not even joking. That's who wrote this movie. You think that's weird? Get this. The dude who voiced the Geico Gecko was also the American Sniper. I'm kidding you. I'm, I'm lying. That, that's not true. So, 13 years before he headed up the newsroom, Jeff Daniels was part of another newsroom in this movie, as Tim O'Hara, a producer for a local station in Santa Barbara struggling to get his big break. He finally gets it when his boss, Mayor Ebert, lets him produce a live broadcast of the space shuttle anchored by his daughter, played by Elizabeth Hurley, who Jeff Daniels happens to have a huge crush on, and cue the goofy misunderstanding that gets him fired. God, you're beautiful. God, you're beautiful. Oh well, it could have been worse. He could have had her say this. Go fuck yourself, San Diego. So as if getting fired wasn't enough for Tim, he also comes across a mysterious spaceship that crashes out of the sky, as piloted by our titular Martian, played by Christopher Lloyd. The Martian hitches a ride in Tim's trunk, and once Tim discovers his intergalactic visitor, he reluctantly decides to give him a place to stay as he fixes his spaceship, while passing him off as his Uncle Martin, and also dealing with Martin's rambunctious talking suit, voiced by Wayne Knight. Coming in for a landing, flop down! <laughs> Boy, that is the creation of a coked up studio executive if ever I saw one. Yes, I will gladly greenlight your film. If you have a Martian wear suit that has the voice of Newman from Seinfeld, I will not negotiate with you on this! So from here you get the expected series of goofy situations and wacky antics as Martin familiarizes himself with his earthly surroundings and Tim tries to record him to give Tim the big story that will get his job back. Martin disguises himself as his roommate to get into Daryl Hannah's pants. He becomes addicted to ice cream. Ooh, cookie doll. And he discovers his ship's security program is rigged to explode and destroy the entire Earth, which makes Martin none too happy. Boy, a pun, <laughs> well, this is just great. Jeff Daniels has no food, he has no job, his uncle's head is falling off! Okay, just calm down. And on top of that, Martin is also being pursued by a pair of nosy government agents, played by Wallace Shawn and obligatory cameo from the original show, Ray Walston. All of these elements join together to create another bland, farcical Disney comedy straight off the assembly line. As Martin's spacesuit cracks topical 90s jokes. Well, over here, Tiger Woods. Say, aren't you one of the Spice Girls? And Jeff Daniels keeps telling people his uncle is a Martian, even though as a level-headed adult man, he should know that no one's gonna fucking believe him but as unfunny and by the numbers as it is i'm gonna go easy on it for one thing christopher lloyd is always a fun actor to watch sure he mostly just mugged for the camera but if there's any actor who can pull off mugging for the camera it's christopher lloyd oh no i'm sinking into a martian depression <sighs> if you or anyone you know is suffering from martian depression call our toll-free hotline at 1-800 and on the other hand, I've been hiding a very important connection between me and this movie. It's the movie I've seen the most times in the theater. Five times. Tied with Shrek. And the reason that the eight-year-old version of me loved it so much was because of one scene. You see, in the movie, Martians are able to take human form by chewing a special gum called Nerplex. And when humans chew it, they take alien form. Well, in order to save Jeff Daniels from a pair of aggressive guards, Daryl Hannah chews on some of this gum, turns into an alien, and proceeds to eat one of the guards whole. 
blew my mind open as a kid, and it still does today. So if you would like a kid's movie where a man is eaten alive, then this movie is a harmless blast of 90s nostalgia. But for most of you, don't waste your time on this movie like I have. I mean, how do you think I feel? I dragged my parents to go see it with me five times. Could have seen something good that came out that year like the Iron Giant. But no, I had to watch my favorite Martian for the fifth time. What is wrong with me? If you know the answer to that question, please send your letters here. Now it's time to get your ass to Mars and open your mind and insert another Total Recall reference here before you play the awfully good drinking game. Take a shot or drink every time Christopher Lloyd says blots. 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 Oh, blots. I have a feeling blots is really the Martian term for Great Scott. Someone chews some Nurplex and changes into a human or alien. Holy shit, a Martian! Holy shit, Wallace Shawn! That's even worse somehow! Kill it! Christopher Lloyd strips naked or changes into a new outfit, including this one that makes him look like the lost member of Dexy's Midnight Runners. And take a double shot when you see a guest appearance by that Yes Man doll that you may remember from those Nick at Night commercials. Nick at night. How do you do it? Then take another double shot for the two times this old dude jiggles his pecs. What do you think? That's right, awfully good viewers. Sleep tight with this mental image in your head. Look at it! Look at it! Look at it! I want all of you to look at it! <laughs> and on the nudie watch, well, we have a Disney movie on our hands, so we don't have any nudity to be found. Well, unless you consider this scene in a kid's movie that suggests Wallace Shawn is about to rape Elizabeth Hurley. I'm just going to give her a quick examination. Yeah. <laughs> Wallace Shawn having sex with Elizabeth Hurley. Now that thought is truly inconceivable. inconceivable. <laughs> On the enjoyableness continuum scale from Boulder Bruce, my favorite Martian would have to be Marvin. But as for this Martian, he'll have to settle for a four out of 10. If we ever get visited by aliens, take him to our leader, but don't take him to this movie. I'm Jesse Schaefer, JoeBlow.com, and I'm still stuck on one thought. After Daryl Hannah turns back into a human, how the hell is that security guard gonna come out when she has to go to the bathroom? Oh God, I just threw up his ribs. <laughs> Holy shit, is that his large intestine? Oh God, his eyeballs stuck in my throat. I gotta induce vomiting. Yeah, that'll do it. everyone, Jesse Shade here from Awfully Good Movies. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see me take on more good bad movies, click on any of the links you see here, or subscribe to see this show alongside all the great content that we offer here at JoeBlow.com. And remember, I love you. Uh, wait, that sounded wrong. But I do love you though.